Marjorie Taylor Greene, listen, I think what she's doing is perfect. I think Marjorie Taylor Greene needs to keep on behaving exactly the way she's behaving. I think Democrats were crazy to let George Santos leave the Congress. I think you have to have these people to show the contrast. You ha I mean, Mike Johnson begged them to behave and they have no impulse control. They couldn't do it. I think it's great. This clown they've got, who's going to be the GOP nominee for governor in North Carolina. <laughs> Robinson. Black man who's saying that black people should pay reparations to white people to thank them for bringing them over on the slave ships and the Holocaust never happened. Make these people famous. Show the clown car. Don't try to dress it up and look. They brought in Katie Britt thinking she'd make them look good. They don't give a damn about women. It's all window dressing to them. So I say the freaks deserve to be first and foremost. Democrats should have kept George Santos in the Congress and every day picked him up by the ankles and beat the Republican caucus with him. Marjorie Taylor <laughs> helps so much with Democratic voter turnout and Democratic fundraising. Leave her alone and let her be this vulgar batshit Nazi. <laughs> and Joe you know, Biden saw her and <laughs> uh, took her to, mocked her to her face. But Mark Robinson, I think, uh, to your point, I think he's going to be a huge driver in North Carolina because he's 49 checking. other states, Joe, 49 yeah. other states he's going to drive people. That's true. I mean, he also said that he wants to go back to a time when women couldn't vote. So there's that as well. Um, but let's let's go back to Katie Britt for just a second, because that was extra special bat shittery right there. Oh. I mean. What are your thoughts? <laughs> I didn't, I, I got to be honest, I didn't get to finish watching her speech. Did she finally get to speak with the manager by the end? <laughs> the before? Um, I, I loved it. I thought she put the cue in Karen last night. <laughs> this is Alabama. And last night, Alabama sent us a message that Tommy Tuberville is the smart one. And <laughs> my God, I mean, there's, there's, there's parts of Alabama where Katie Britt is legally a member of Mensa. Um, I, I <laughs> I, I can't wait for my child to learn about her at school during Dead Inside Women's History Month. I mean, <laughs> is she okay, Joanne? Is she is that is that lady okay? I, I was I was like, Katie, show me on the doll where America hurt you. I'm I'm worried. I was like, this is like this Douglas Cirque melodrama on Vicodin. I'm watching this speech and I'm just like, no, really, what what antidepressant is this an ad for? My God. <laughs> <laughs> it's the first scene in the Lifetime movie where she loses the job and then has to move back to her hometown. I mean, I, I, it was, it was fantastic. If you're telling a horror story about cartel sex trafficking and everyone's laughing at the details, maybe you're not good at this job. That's, that's, <laughs> I, that was great. Make her famous. It was, and the, the whole thing took place in her kitchen, which looks like it's never been used by the way. <laughs> In her kitchen. She's a senator. What I is know. she doing in her kitchen? <laughs> she had to be in the kitchen because that's where the phone is in case she sees a black guy in the neighborhood. So <laughs> I understand why it was there. And by the way, it's not, I don't want to laugh, but the, the, the trafficking story, the, the number of times she said over and over and over and over, I was like, are we, are we okay right now? Like, <laughs> what's happening? I mean, I, I got to say, I don't want to vote for her, but I would love her across space and time and a bridge across forever to infinity <laughs> and beyond. I, I mean, my God, it was she was like a, 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 a someone who's read a little too many Harlequin romance novels and is mixing the wrong meds. I, I just it, it was so cynical. You know, they just thought, OK, she's young and female. This will distract from the fact that people who are young and female hate us. And it showed how cynical, uh, I mean, my God, I never thought I'd say have Josh Hawley do it instead, but wow. I mean, they, they stepped in it so badly last night. I got to be honest, horrible Republican rebuttal speeches is becoming my favorite genre of short film. Bobby Jindal is still way up here, but Marco Rubio, Paul Ryan, and she joins the ranks. It was great TV. When Sarah Sanders is like the gold standard of Republican responses, it's that's probably not it's not really the best look. <laughs> there's no way to parody this. I no. mean, there's no, you can't you can't make a sketch out of this. You can't do it in a more bizarre way than it's already been. And 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 you got to remember, presumably they signed off on this. Presumably someone in authority read this speech signed off on it. I mean, I like that this is happening within 24 hours of Lara Trump being put in charge of looting the RNC for Donald Trump's legal bills. It's mm -hmm. just 
boy, they can pick them. And I say, stay out of their way. I 100% agree that apparently that speech, well, it was so bad and so weird. It was such a train wreck. But they're not even the GOP's not even clipping it. They're they're using these um, graphics <laughs> the quotes on them. And the graphics themselves are beyond parody. I did try and parody it, by the way. What I did was I went with the domestic jobs kind of or she, um, she's giving the uh, the response while cleaning the toilet and scrubbing the shower and just the, all the menial tasks of like domestic goddesshood but also that fundy baby voice that she did i mean terrifying right like terrifying but i, I agree with you i think that that actually was one of the biggest gifts we got of the night was just how awful that was yeah I mean, she did. So, I mean, I keep saying at this point, the way these Republicans are doing, I, this old man can campaign for re-election in a bathrobe and slippers. I mean, Joe, <laughs> Joe Biden could be in a, in, a, in a hospital gown that's open and he's drooling. And he'd be more <laughs> I mean, he could have an alien popping out of his chest while he's playing free bird on air guitar and he'd be more presidential than anything the Republicans can put up. It's just we're going to look back on this year and think, why were we so panicked for so long? Why were we so gaslit because Biden's old and the media is lazy? Yep. Bingo. I mean, that is exactly what it is. Plus, you know, I do believe that they they want the the horse race and they want the the conflict and and they want the uncertainty and the polling. And, yeah. They want Trump sized 2016 to 2020 ratings back. And mm -hmm. Donald Trump can't even fill his own rallies the way he used to anymore. That's not going to come back. What scares me more is the fact that every evil dictator in the world wants Donald Trump. I mean, maybe the one thing Hamas and Netanyahu can agree on is they want Donald Trump and North Korea wants him. The Saudi royal family wants Trump back. Putin wants Trump back. Scary things going to come this fall because OPEC's cutting oil production again. Mm -hmm. Literally. So the supply will go down and they're doing this. So gas prices will be as high as possible by the late summer, early fall. Mm -hmm. That to me is Joe Biden's greatest danger now is gas prices. But we are now at a point also where, and again, sorry, Libs, but when a Democrat seeking reelection, just prepare yourself. America is now producing more fossil fuels than any country ever has any year in the history of the planet. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's a message that they... They don't like to talk about all that often, but when push comes to shove, uh, you got to do what you got to do. Again, the democracy is at stake here, and they're going to probably up the deportations too because that's yet yep. another thing. They deported a lot of people. They don't talk about that very much again because it doesn't message well. But this this idea that the world's worst actors have you know Trump as their 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 obvious favorite should scare all of us and obviously he's saying he'll be a dictator on day one and he will disband our disband nato essentially certainly pull out of nato